This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. You all ready for this? Mm -hmm. dun, 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 dun. This is a <laughs> sham. No. No. Nope. Just stop. Get real. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to DBL. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Yes, all right. Come on, people, wake up. Did it's you too know? Early for that. A lot of people think it's actually Mexican Independence Day, which it is not. Huh. It is actually a celebration to commemorate Mexico's victory over the French at the Battle of Puebla. Mm. Did I have some times? <laughs> oh man! Living in LA, LA working at the Spanish kitchen. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's a good time. Good so you time. Yeah, when you drink <laughs> at a certain age, is a good time. out a bar, happy ending. Yeah. It had nothing to do with Mexico <laughs> or independence or their <laughs> defeat over the French. Okay. Nope, not either of those. All right. A lot of you are already talking about this. Amber Heard is back on the stand today in the defamation lawsuit filed by her ex Johnny Depp. Here's a video from Amber from yesterday on the first day of her testimony. She talked about falling in love with Johnny as well as some of the alleged domestic abuse and a warning to our viewers. Some of Amber's testimony is disturbing. Take a look. I thought he was the love of my life. And he was. He was. But he was also this other thing. And that other thing was awful. He's like grabbing my, my, my breasts. He's touching my thighs. Um, he rips my underwear off proceeds to do a cavity search. He said he was looking for his drugs, his cocaine, his coke. Well, that was just a little snippet that there's been a, a whole lot more that's been I think happening. that was enough. I think we got yeah. it. Uh -huh. um, there's a whole lot more happening in the courtroom. And of course, to help us make sense of it all, our favorite body language expert and CEO of the Body Language Institute, Janine yes. Drivers back. Hey, Janine. Hello. Janine, so good to have you back. I have a lot of questions that I can't ask on air, but I do have one that I will <laughs> ask on air. You watched Amber's testimony yesterday. In your opinion, listen, I gotta, I gotta be honest with you, Amber. You're the expert here. I weren't buying those. I wasn't buying those tears. What did you make of her body language yesterday? So there's a reason why we have an ear, nose, and throat doctor is they're all connected. Yeah. And one of the ways we can spot deceptive people is when they are pretending to cry, there's no tears, there's no deep swallows. We saw this with Susan Smith, who killed and drowned her two young sons in the early 90s because yeah. she was dating a guy that didn't want to date a woman with kids. She fake cried. <laughs> I loved my boys. She talked in the wrong tense, which I think we'll talk about with Amber here, too. Mm -hmm. That's, well, hey, you, you're getting right to it because a lot of people are talking about the fact that Amber changed tenses a lot during her testimony. Please tell us, including myself, what does that mean? Well, listen, we have that body language, right, where she does shoulder shrugs, which is uncertainty. We've got all kinds of facial expressions that are incongruent. She leaks contempt here again. She even leaks some uncertainty. But when it comes to the words, this is where we can separate the fact from fiction. Our BS barometer will start to go off here. She does start stop sentences, and she's changing the tenses. So she says things like, um, he slapped me, he slapped me, and then all of a sudden, uh, slap. So it goes from slap to slap, but he, actually, she actually Janine, doesn't say. Janine, uh, we actually yeah. have that clip that I wanted you to bring up so much. Can we just play that clip really quick? Here's what Janine's talking about. Yeah. It was that simple. Um, I, I just laughed because I thought he was joking and slapped me across the face. So yeah, slap me across the face without he slapped me across the face. Right, and yeah. for when we lose pronouns or when pronouns come and go, what it means is part of these stories that she's telling are truthful. These are the hardest lies to spot. So what I think is, and, and she even later says, you know, she just wanted him to apologize that because to know he could hurt her versus he had just hurt her. Um. He hurt me. He said, I just want to apologize and understand he could hurt me. Mm. So this is loaded with perception, guys. I've got to tell you, these tenses changing. We even see her tongue sticking out a little bit when she's talking. This is usually when someone realizes they made a mistake. Mm. So we've got a lot. Going on. It's a body language expert's dream come true, and it's really sad for, for Johnny Depp that he's been put through this. There's yeah. a lot of deception happening. Yeah, I don't know. Again, I don't know the truth, but again, I did not buy it because I watched all the datelines. No tears means BRF, big red flag. Were there other I've parts? I've never heard that acronym, ever. Well, I, you've heard it now. I know. I heard you BFG, the big yeah. giant, giant what the a big friendly giant. Yeah. Uh, uh. Okay, Were there other parts of Amber's testimony for you that raised those red flags, like how she started and then would stop a sentence? Is that something? 
Yes, so those are start soft sentences. And what those are, it's like a scar on your body. It's something has been removed and we're attaching your skin to two different places. Start stop sentences indicate she is removing something from what she's telling us and she's blending it together and it creates that scar tissue happening right there. You know, another thing she makes it before we say goodbye is um, she does this mouth shrug all the time. Yeah. Like her lips go there. I can't even imitate it. That is a lack in confidence in your words. So when someone does this, it's a lack in confidence of her words. And one time she does this oh, very smart. dramatically when she's talking about it. That's uncertainty. Uh, That's like, mm, I don't know what I want to say next. Hmm. Mm. Uh. Jenny, I have a couple of things I want to ask you. One, you'd be a great acting coach. I'm not even I kidding. Totally like, that's a, like to break idea. down how people should so react good. in that moment. I think you'd be fantastic at. And two, is your opinion, because everything you're saying, I'm buying, Is it does it hold up in court, your opinion? Like, could they ask you to testify on the stand? Mm. No, however, I just was in Boston, Massachusetts yesterday teaching 400 police officers from the state to the local police. And I teach judges and trial lawyers and how to separate fact from fiction. And I said next needs to be host of shows to what to spot in an interview to know where to ask the questions next. Wow. All right, so now, Amber, the big question. You both, you've seen Johnny, you've seen Amber testify. In your opinion, who is being truthful and who do you think is the aggressor in this case? I don't know if you just call me Amber there, so, but Amber, Whoa. I think, is the liar. Did I say Amber? Yeah, that's no, Amber. interesting. Oh, my God, what does that mean? I Am I, I a know. bad person? She's effective. She gets in everybody's I minds. Even... I may have misheard it. I'm in a hotel no, I'm, over here. I'm Atlanta. pretty positive I, I messed up. <laughs> I don't, listen, guys, I don't think you need to be a body language expert to feel the difference. Johnny's baseline remains the same. Look at any interviews he's done throughout the years. It's the same Johnny. He laughs at awkward moments. He's cheeky and funny, a little edgy, gains attention. Amber comes out, it changes her baseline. She typically does not, is not a big smiler. Even Johnny testified that she can be really nasty to people and sent a boy out of a restaurant crying or out of a meeting crying and so she's changing her baseline to me it's how she's been coached she's yeah. coached to smile to look at the jury and it comes across as inauthentic anytime someone changes their baseline it screams liar liar pants on fire Ooh. you're fantastic Amber. amazing oh. Oh. i'm kidding i'm kidding <laughs> janine. janine you're fantastic for real janine awesome. thanks so jay i appreciate it <laughs> Jenny, thank you so much for your expert analysis. For everyone at home, if you are interested, this is really a fascinating way of looking I at the case. I love it, yes. You can learn more about what's going on in this trial, what body language really means by checking out Janine's TikTok at Body Language Institute. Thanks again, Janine. We are Thanks, so Janine. thankful we have you. you. Coming up Bye, on TV, take care of my love. New details on the Dave Chappelle on stage assault, including the weapon the attacker had on him, plus what fellow comedian Howie Mandel is saying about the future of comedy. Speaking of comedy, Margaret Cho is also weighing in. She gives us her take on what comedians deal with during performances. Stay tuned for that. Closed captioning provided by Daily Blast Live is always focused, always on cue, always ready, always timely. This May, don't miss a day. DBL is all new every day. So, Sierra, we were just saying to Jeff and Al that we thought Amber Heard, all collectively, three of us, is like she's not even a good actress. It's not even that we don't believe her. We don't even think she's faking well. But I feel, I feel like right? the, 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 the symbol for a good actor, period, no matter what you're, how you what identify, you was being able to cry on cue. I feel, I feel like that separated totally. the, the, Laura the Linney, big dogs. Yes. Julianne Moore. Right, being able to cry on cue. You're, you're the point about the that if she can convince the jury that he hit her even once, she's gonna win. No. Okay. Yeah, it's, I mean, but all you need is one person, and that's kind of. Because that's what it's about. He's saying he never. Used he her said, ever. full stop, I have and never touched her. If, if she convinces the jury that even just once right. he did, she right. wins. But the public opinion, the court of public opinion so far, and I know it's not the jury, seems to be very much swayed to Johnny Depp. I would say it's this. all Johnny, and I Which feel like kind of, Don't you feel like that's a little weird in the day and age we're living? Because we just start, still are in believe all women, mm -hmm. right? No matter what, yeah. you're supposed to believe all women. And it seems like you said the majority is on Johnny Depp's side. This, this just case. doesn't smell right. And before we even get to believe all women, it's like we all have this human thing like, that doesn't seem, something's weird over yeah, yeah, there. And that's funny. what everybody's picking up. I don't you know, have any allegiance to Johnny Depp, and we have talked about people much more famous than him. 
that I believe have done things that weren't right, and I've called that out. Mm. I don't like I'm not a Johnny Depp fan club, but just from an outsider that just has seen a lot yeah. of people tell the truth and a lot of people lie, it just looks like which is that crying just was so. It just was so inauthentic. Yeah. And let me say something: three percent of women make up or people make up sexual assault cases, which is why we always say believe the victim, believe the survivor. But Jeff's point to the point, it was like I'm glad the country is a little bit more discerning and being like slow you down. You know that's all that was really cool. I'm gonna cut you off. I saw five years ago Doug Stanhope, who's Johnny Depp's friend. By the way, Janine is amazing. On her. Welcome back. The comedy world is reacting to Dave Chappelle being attacked while on stage at the Hollywood Bowl. On Tuesday, here you see it. Uh, you see it in this TMZ video here. Dave himself is responding through his spokesperson, saying he's working with police and refuses to let the attack overshadow his show. And TMZ got audio of Dave talking about the attack just hours afterwards. Take a listen. I felt good. My friends broke his arm. Police also released photos of the weapon used in the attack. Good Lord. That is a gun replica, of course, but that is a real knife attached to it. Fellow comedians are also speaking out. Here's what Howie Mandel had to say about it yesterday on E! News Pop. Not to comment on what happened at the Academy Awards, but I thought that that opened the floodgates. Violence triggers violence. And I think yes. this is the beginning of, you know, the end for comedy. I, I've been in the business for 45 years and my biggest fear is that you wouldn't laugh and there'd be silence. There shouldn't be fear for my own yeah. well-being. Al, what's your take on that? That it's the end of comedy. Well, at first, you know, because we talked about this morning. I was just talking to our beloved Michael Dean. And I was like, well, maybe that's a step too far, the end of comedy. But, you know, it, it is an interesting point in a place where, where we are with comedians where you can get canceled for something that you say, even though it may be taken out of context, which is really all comedy is, is something out of context, in context, in the form of a joke. And now you also have people that have been so radicalized online that if something you say doesn't cause you to be canceled online, it can cause you to be injured in real time. Mm -hmm. And this is what happens when you start to attack the people that we have given kind of the right to be social commentators. We listen to people like George Carlin talk about how he saw society in the direction he was go that we were going. We listened to Richard Pryor talk about the struggles of addiction and where are we now, Jeff, in a country awash of opioids. The comics are there to talk about things that are unpleasant. And when we remove them because we want to have some kind of perfect society, what we have is this weird thing where nobody's speaking truths because only comics are paid to do that. Everybody else is... is Great job, Jeff. You know what? You're right. Tori, whatever community you're in, you're right. Don't listen to everybody else. Only comics would be like, you look crazy, bro. And when we remove those people, and if you want to live, live in this fake world, that's where we're headed. So just be sure that this is how we want to spend our time and if we want to live in a place of honesty or dishonesty. Because right now, it seems like people want to be more dishonest, and we'll try that too. Let's see what's up. The truth tellers. I always say the comedy comedians are the truth But it's not even comedians. It's just about people giving a voice of reason. Those people in today's age are silenced, right? right? Or people at least try to silence them. I'm trying to be the voice of reason when we come into difficult conversations and just writing that middle, people are like, get rid of him because you are not 100% on our side. Mm. If you question anything on the other side, which comedians are fantastic, That's they're professionals are supposed at to do. doing, people want them canceled because they don't want to hear a difference of opinion. They want to hear their side and that's it. And if you're not on our team, you're against us. And that's scary and that's where we're at right now and I think the pendulum's coming back a little bit. And now it's turned violent, like actually violent. I wanted to talk about that too, but uh, we'll talk about it again later. Oh good, okay. how excited are you? No, I, do, I actually am because I I'm all right about repercussions. Yeah. I wanted to talk about that, but Excellent. another time. Coming up on DBL, our interview with Margaret Cho. What does she think about the Dave Chappelle incident? Find out coming up next. Parents desperate to feed their babies because of the baby formula shortage. I've seen this Facebook post shared with a recipe for a homemade baby formula. It's a mixture of evaporated milk, purified water, light Cairo syrup and liquid infant vitamins. But is it safe to use? Let's verify. 
Our sources for this are the American Academy of Pediatrics, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, and Katina Little, a pediatric nurse practitioner with Navant Health. The AAP warns parents not to feed homemade formula to infants. It might contain too many or not enough nutrients, and it can put babies at risk of getting sick. The FDA also advises parents to not give babies homemade infant formula because of serious health and safety concerns, including contamination, nutritional imbalances, and foodborne illnesses. The FDA does regulate all commercially available infant formulas, but does not regulate recipes for homemade formulas. And Little agrees with all of this. It is not safe to make your own formula. There are several reasons that go along with that. One of the biggest is just the risk factor of not mixing it correctly. Little says if it is not mixed the right way, babies could be given too much or too little of something. She says this could cause problems with brain development, weight gain and digestion, along with many other things. This too will pass and we will get to a point where we have enough. Um, so the resources that you can tap into will hold you over until you can get it. But I, I wanna say just, don't think you know you have to resort to making it on your own or creating it on your own. So we can verify that no, it is not safe to feed your baby homemade formula. Rolling Stone magazine named her one of the best stand up comics of all time. Earlier, we spoke with Margaret Cho and got her take on Dave Chappelle's attack. Take a look. Hi. Margaret, I got, we got to get right to this because obviously all the drama going on. Uh, you're so cool. You're part of the Netflix is a joke festival lineup. Obviously, Dave Chappelle attacked her in the set. Uh, I just want to know what do you think happened and how is this affecting you as a fellow comic? I think it's really crazy and sad and you know that we're just getting attacked physically what's great is that chris walk was there to say hey was that will smith <laughs> it's really incredible um you know uh i think that's one of the things that we love about live performance is that anything can happen and one of the things that we don't love about live performance is that anything can happen so really um I think it's one of the things that draws people out to go see shows is that immediacy of the audience and the performer. And, uh, you know, it's um, it's a good thing that uh, Jamie Foxx and Buster Rhymes were, were there to to be, you know, defense. Uh, I, I don't think that uh, anybody would have expected anything like that. Speaking of comedians, you were the last guest on Bob Saget's podcast six days before he passed. Does anything special stand out from that interview or even how precious and short life is in general. It's so precious and I love Bob and I cannot believe he's not here along with Louis yeah. Anderson, along with Gilbert yeah. and Norm. You know, these are people, these are our family. You know, comedians, we're really close. And I mean, that's why you're seeing, you know, somebody like Chris Rock stepping up for Dave or, or Jamie, who is also a comedian, um, stepping up. For Dave, you you have us uh, doing anything we can for each other, and these guys are really family. And I'm I'm still trying to process the grief. Mm -hmm. That's the thing is, comedians are not great at grief. Um, we lose our greatest people like Robin Williams, people like Joan Rivers, who um, you know I still have a hard time thinking about that. Mm -hmm. So we lose them along the way so love them while you have them love them lo love them if you got them good advice yes. love that yeah. love that well margaret you grew up in san francisco and your parents actually owned a gay bookstore so how did they feel about you coming out as queer well they understand lesbians they understand straight people they don't understand bisexual people because every time i say well i'm actually bisexual they go Oh, no. <laughs> no. 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 So they, they, because they think that the duality of it is false. You know, that you're either betraying one side or another side. Mm. But really, I think it's just, they're just only speaking from their own experience of, okay, we're this. But for me, um, this is sort of the, the uh, struggle of, being queer is understanding the levels of queerness that you exist in. So I'm very happy to proudly be bi. And by bi, I mean um, me and everybody else. 
Exactly. <laughs> True. Um, okay, so Fire Island, the name of your new movie. Uh, some viewers may not know that Fire Island is actually a beach town getaway for celebrities and the gay community. Now, tell me why is it being called a, or series rather, why is it being called a modern day Pride and Prejudice? Tell us. It is a reimagining of the story where, uh, ha uh, uh, you know, it's like class is really defined, but when you infuse romance into the story, then it changes the game. So really, these are kind of universal themes that work both in uh, Britain in the 1800s and here on Fire Island in 2022. So it's a wonderful, wonderful film. It's gay, Asian, it's me, it's the incredible Bo and Yang, the incredible Joel Kim, Joel Kim Booster who wrote and stars in this. And we had an amazing time making it on the greatest gay beach in the world. Margaret, thank you so much for joining us. To our viewers, you can catch her in yes. Fire Island, streaming June 3rd on Hulu. And you can also visit margaretcho.com for live tour dates. You gotta see her live. We'll be right back. Thank you, Margaret. Thanks, Margaret. Thank you. Promotional consideration is brought to you by Supreme Court has confirmed that a draft opinion on abortion rights leaked to Politico is legitimate. The opinion was written by Justice Samuel Alito, and it is not final, but it indicates the court could be preparing to overturn Roe v. Wade and allow states to make their own abortion laws. Both the opinion and the fact that it was leaked made huge waves, with many calling the leak unprecedented. But is that really true? Is this the first time a Supreme Court decision has been leaked to the public? Let's verify. Our sources, Time Magazine, lawyer and historian James Robinault, the New York Daily Tribune from 1852, the Washington Post from 1986, and two law professors, Josh Blackman and Ben Barton. Roe v. Wade was decided on January 22, 1973. Just hours beforehand, this edition of Time Magazine hit newsstands. In it was this article reading, quote, Last week, Time learned that the Supreme Court has decided to strike down nearly every anti-abortion law in the land. Historian James Robinault explained what happened in a recent column for the Washington Post. He had previously interviewed the leaker, who said the article wasn't supposed to be published until after the official release. But that release got delayed a few hours, and so time wound up jumping the gun. But that wasn't the first time a decision leaked. Historian Jonathan Peters said on Twitter an 1852 decision was published 10 days before it was officially announced. We actually found that clipping in the archives of the New York Daily Tribune. It's only a short blurb that reads, the Supreme Court have decided the case of Pennsylvania against the Wheeling and Belmont Bridge Company in favor of the former party. Judge McLean will deliver the opinion of the court someday this week. In fact, it was delivered more than a week later. And finally, one of the more recent examples of a leaked decision comes from 1986, when the court struck down a key portion of a recently passed budget law. Here's an article from the Washington Post at the time, dated July 8th. It reads, quote, ABC News Supreme Court correspondent Tim O'Brien, in a rare leak from the court June 15th, reported that the law would be struck down the next day on a 7-2 vote and that Berger was writing the opinion. O'Brien was right about the outcome, but his predicted date was off by a few weeks. So we can verify, no, this is not the first leaked Supreme Court decision. But legal scholars we talked to said it's still an historic occurrence. This is the first time a complete draft opinion has ever been leaked. Leaking the outcome and even a proposed vote tally is really different than leaking these early versions of the opinion where you're getting the inside voice of the Supreme Court. Word of decisions has leaked out, and that's unfortunate, but never a draft decision leaked out months in advance. This is simply uh, startling. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. All next week on DBL, Hollywood legend Mary Lou Henner will be here as our special guest co-host. Along with her unfiltered takes on the week's hottest topic, she'll tell us all about her start in the original production of Grease and her wild times behind the scenes of her hit show, Taxi. Mary Lou Henner is like, we have a history. You know what I'm saying? Danny's a blast and a great kisser. <laughs> Plus, we've got a big surprise for her live all next week. You're not going to want to miss a day.
Welcome back to DBL. Mother's Day is this weekend. And for those last minute shoppers, we've got you covered. Check out these deals from our friends at Morning Save. Take a look. Steph, what do you have for us today? First up, we've got True Beauty Microderm Blemish System. Whoa. So this deal includes one base mm. with four different tips, five jewel and extraction tools, one storage case, and one charging cord. So what this will do is draw out your built up impurities from under the skin. Normally this is $25, we've got it for 12. It saves everyone 52%. We've got Ella Jane three-piece comforter set or a four-piece triple brush sheet set. Oh, so this includes one flat sheet, one fitted sheet, and two pillowcases. Or if you want to go for the comforter set, it includes one comforter and two shams. Normally the sets are between $70 and $130. So you can get either set between $19 and $39, depending on the size that you're going oh. to need. But either way, it's saving you $70. 73%. We've got the Optimus 2.0 Gallon Cool Mist Evaporative Humidifier. Oh, good. So this deal includes one humidifier. This little control knob here lets you easily control the desired output level to experience that humidified air. So normally this is $70. Okay. But we've got it, Tori, for $29. Oh! That's 59% off. Oh, the retail price just evaporated, so. I love that, Tori. Oh, look at that. And then last but certainly not least, we've got Eco Home three-piece stainless steel mixing bowl with bamboo lid. Look how good that looks. I man. know, this is fancy. So this deal includes three different bowls with three lids. Each bowl is stainless steel, so you don't have to worry about plastic leaking into your food. Wow. Normally, these are $60. Yeah. But we've got them for $29. Saving 52%. Now that's a good deal. All right, head on over to morningsaves.com to snag these amazing deals at the lowest prices. You can even just scan that QR code on screen right with your phone or visit morningsave.com on your smartphone as well. Thank you so, so much, Steph. Those bowls were amazing. All right, I just want to read this comment from Ask Raku. Uh, no, you can make fun of people, but just don't make it in a way that doesn't respect them, and there are ways to do that, believe it or not. I actually fully disagree with that statement. I think, as a comedian, you have the full 360. Right, it's, it's their ways. It's like, if you use the ways that I have to make fun of people, it's okay. Well, what about Jeff's ways, and what about right. my ways? What if things that you say, yeah, I don't mind if you make fun of my hair, and some people are like, my hair is part of my culture, don't talk. Right. Everybody's got something else going on yeah. and if we need it, to have individual focus groups before the show it's going to take a little while Jeff it's less yeah. funny yeah. It's Every, less yeah. everybody's <laughs> offended you put 200 people in a room how many people are you offending just by one joke yeah. right? so don't don't tell me that it's That's okay yeah. we'll see you tomorrow guys thanks for being here where hope finds help where courage meets conviction where makers make fans. We are Tegna, a family of local and national media brands that bring us together, serving the greater good of our communities, where national know-how backs local business. Be in good company with Tegna. All next week on DBL, Hollywood legend Mary Lou Henner will be here as our special guest co-host with her unfiltered takes on the week's hottest topics. Plus, we've got a big surprise for her live all next week. You're not going to want to miss a day.